great about that, other than trying to help people who are in the state of the Welcome back to the Immigration Answers Show. My name is Jim Hacking. I'm an immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States out of our offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. I'm starting a little bit early today because my kids are all home and I'm going to go home and make dinner and hang out with them a little early. So we started a little bit early today, just about 10 minutes early. We'll be here for the next hour trying to answer all of your immigration law related questions. How's everybody doing? Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Happy November 21st. Nine days left in the month of November. I hope you all are doing well. I hope everybody's having a good day. Let us know where you're watching from. We see we have friends in Tampa and Oklahoma and Baltimore, Virginia. Tony's here. Felicia's here visiting from Orlando for the first time. Thank you for leaving us a comment. Yu Yu Yin is watching in Arlington. Um, and Vino's in Houston. Oh, there's old Vino. We see Vino all the time. Vino's been on many times on the show. Raphael wishes all a happy Tuesday. My friend Huli's here. She'll be monitoring the comments. She'll be posting up little messages for you. She'll she'll give you the link throughout the show, letting you know where um, you need to go to get in the waiting room to ask me a question. Um, the New York Times had an interesting story this morning about Donald Trump's tilt towards fascism. Uh, I'm glad that the media is starting to make clear that one presidential candidate wants to destroy democratic norms and one does not. That one wants the government and the country to continue as it always has and the other does not. So keep paying attention, everybody. Hopefully the New York Times will keep paying attention. Ola Dayu is watching from Baltimore for the first time. Our friend Rashid in Morocco is here. Uh, Kawika is in California. We got SF Dioska down in South Carolina. Listen, the waiting room has room. If you have questions, come on in, ask me a question. The water's fine. We won't bite. Joanna's chiming in from St. Kitts. Boy, wouldn't we all like to be in St. Kitts right now? That wouldn't be so bad. Um, it's sort of cold and rainy here. I'm in my new office in St. Louis. We're still setting up the studio. So in a couple of days, we'll have the studio set up for the show. Um, <clears throat> but for now, we are here with you right out of my office. So I'm not sure if my um, earbuds are working or not. So I'm going to go to Paul. But Paul, go ahead and say something and we'll see if it's working. Hey, Jim. How are you doing? I'm good, Paul. How are you? I'm doing great. It's been a long time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I've been watching your show for quite some time now. I remember back in the days you were... Uh, you know, let me say chubby. Hold on a second. Then, Hold on a second. Hold on. It's garbled for me. Huli, is it garbled for you or is it just me? Probably me? just you. Yeah. Hold that on. can hear a lot Your audio is garbled. Oh, okay. Come back we'll, to Paul. We'll, we'll try it. We'll, we'll try Paul back in a minute. Let's, uh, let's go to Vino. Vino, how are you? Hey, Jim. I'm good. How are you? Oh, man, I don't know what's going on with the audio. Hold on a second. You can hear Vino okay, Huli? Yeah, Vino, go ahead. Talk for a minute. Hey, Jim, how are you? I'm good. Yeah, that's How's really bad. Um, that's so good. Okay, hold on. I have an idea. Just give me a second, okay? I'll be right back, Vino. Hold on. All right. Um, I am going to switch. Settings. Yeah.
Being a who of us you want to practice either. Oh man, this sucks. Iron says he can hear everybody fine. Okay. Um I'm gonna go back to Wi Fi. Can you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you okay. We're just going to go with this. Thank you, ma'am. Huh, sorry, I tried to take you out too. There we go. Vino's gone. Mike is here. Hello, Mike. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you, Mike. How are you? Good. I'm going to try Camera. That's right. Uh, I had a quick question. So uh, my, I put in an application for my wife. She has DACA and um, we did the adjustment status package. Um, and I think I talked to you earlier because I had submitted the 864 without a um, uh, without having my most recent tax return. And so I got that completed and I sent it in as additional evidence. Um, but then I just most recently got a RFE anyways for asking for that essentially. So I responded with the thing I had already uploaded. I assume they just didn't see it. Um, but I was thinking, is there going to be an issue? Because I realized the income that I think was on the 864 is now different than what was on that tax transcript. Because I had some um, basically like losses on my uh, tax return due to depreciation and a rental property that we own. And okay. so I don't, are they going to see that and be like confused by it? Or do you think it's not a big deal? Probably. So what, is there anything I should be doing, like uploading another 864 form or just wait until they ask about it or? I think for something like that, I would go ahead and issue it and, and prepare a new 864 and upload it. Okay. Okay. I'll do that. Thank you. Bye, Mike. Good luck, buddy. Thanks. All right. That was Mike. Um, my audio is still not great, but if you guys can hear, I can suffer through. Let's go to BG. Hello, BG. Hi, Jim. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can. How you doing? Hi, good. I actually, you called on me last night right before you were ending the show, and I had just canceled out of the waiting room. I couldn't believe it. But um, thanks for doing these shows, by the way. I just have a sure. question regarding priority date. We have an I-130, me and my husband, that was approved. And the priority date is May 1st, twenty. 22. So now what do I do with that? Because I've been trying to look at like the visa bulletin. Well, let's talk about it. What kind of case is it? Who is the petitioner? So I'm the citizen and my husband um, is, you know, he's, I, I guess, is he the petitioner? So you're married to a U.S. citizen? No, no, I'm the citizen. You're, you're the citizen and your and your and your spouse is where overseas or in the United States no he's here he entered he entered many years ago um, without inspection okay so if you're married to a US citizen then the priority date doesn't apply to I mean it does apply but the the visa bulletin doesn't apply to you the visa bulletin does not deal with immediate relatives, which are the spouses, children, and adults of U.S. citizens. What adult are the parents, spouses, and underage children of U.S. citizens? What are you trying to figure out? Why, why are you asking about the date? Oh, no, because I'm not like, you know, I'm just, I'm learning as we go along, but okay. I keep hearing about this priority date, priority date having, you know, having to do with something. And I was just wondering what okay. that was, but I guess okay. that doesn't apply to us. No, you're, you're good. So it does in a way. So so like we haven't done we haven't done a 601a yet like we're waiting to do that because we're waiting to hear from the nbc like the nbc got our case for processing but we haven't paid any fees to them yet so right now we're at that point so the i-130 has been approved yeah how long ago i think it got approved in july and nothing's happened since then no we just got a welcome email from nbc um but that's it like we haven't so you need to start bothering the shit out of the NBC. They should have moved on this case. The, the, the stage you're in now should only last one month. Okay. 
So you need to start bothering them to open up the case so that you can pay the fee. And then once you pay the fee, then you can get working on the on the on the I six hundred one. Is it six hundred one A or six hundred one? My lawyer is not sure yet. He doesn't know which one he wants to do. Like he doesn't know, you know, if he wants to do both or one or I don't know. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so so you're know. just chilling. You're just you just need you just need the the next thing that needs to happen is you need to pay your NBC fees and you can't do that because for some reason they're sitting on their ass. Of course. So my my next question is, I don't know if you have an answer for this, probably not, but like once you file a 601A, what's the time frame of them like you don't know, whatever. Everybody will chime everyone everyone's gonna chime in in a minute. They're all gonna start yelling and screaming in the comments, but probably between a year and a half and two years. Okay. All right. I mean, right now USCIS is being sued because they're so damn slow on 601As. I know, I know. So what happens with that? Like, let's just say we file the 601A in a month from now, right? Like, what's the time frame before you can say, like, you guys are dragging your ass and, like, I want to sue you? Well, I mean, at least a year. A year. Okay. All right. One step at a time, BG. One step at a time. Thanks, Jim. Have a good night. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, you too. Good luck. All right, all right. Vino's back. Hello, Vino. Hey, Jim. How are you? I'm good, buddy. How are you doing? I'm doing really good, <laughs> Jim. So after 2.5 years of wait, my wife and my daughter are here. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. It would I'm have very been, happy. Oh, yeah. It would have been not happen without your uh, valuable inputs at the right time. And also, um, I was able to get things done without any wasting any time, uh, except for USA's regular uh, waiting times. Wouldn't have been done without you. <laughs> it's awesome. Been That's great. Can you could you walk everybody through your timeline, start to finish? Absolutely. So started uh, I won that petition back in uh, July of 2021, and then uh, the petition for I won that was approved in uh, December of uh, July 20 sorry 2022 of December, and then uh, the NVC uh, sent the welcome letter in a week after I received the I-130 approval. And then I received my uh, DQ documentary qualified status from NVC on about uh, January of 2023. And then uh, from January 2023, uh, I submitted an uh, expedited request in uh, July or June, sometime, sometime about July or June. And uh, yeah, July of 17th of 2023, the expert request was approved by state for my wife's case. And then uh, my wife's uh, visa interview was done on uh, September of 22nd and she got approved. And in between I had my daughter. So I applied in uh, while I was at a green flag and then I became a US citizen in uh, July of uh, 2023. So yeah. My daughter was a derivative applicant, then they removed her from the derivative applicant. So I know this would happen. So I applied the I-130 separately for my daughter back in February after speaking with you. And then uh, my daughter's case was also approved for expedited uh, request. And uh, her uh, I-130 was approved in um, uh, August of 2023. And uh, the NVC also approved the expedited request. So my daughter's um, in visa interview done one uh, October 2023. And they they're, are here now. They're here now? Yes. All right, you gotta send me a picture. That's good news. Thanks, Vino. Congrats. Absolutely. And one more question, uh, Jim. So my daughter, uh, should I apply for the N600 for my daughter uh, now? Well, we gotta look at everything to make sure that you've lived in the United States long enough and all that stuff, but probably, yeah. Okay, got it. Sounds good. And See thank you, you so much, Jim. And Congrats. Again, thank you. I'm happy thank for you. you. Bye, Vino. Good job. Don't be a stranger. No, See you, buddy. No, no. Okay. I'll always be there. Thank Bye, you. Bye, buddy. All right. All right. You got to love that. We're all happy for Vino. That that's He pulled off some good stuff there. I mean, getting that kid's case. So, you know, when he became a U.S. citizen, then um, he needed to file a separate I-130 for his daughter. And he was able to pull that off and get it all done this year, which is pretty remarkable. That's pretty great. So let's go to Abhi. Hello, Abhi. Uh, can I just keep my video off while talking to you? The video is off. Okay, thank you. So yeah, uh, I am an F1 visa student here in the United States. And I have heard about the uh, diversity visa. And I really want to know more about it. And also what all things I should keep in mind while I'm filling for it. Did you get selected in it? No, not yet. I'm just an F1 student visa here. 
What country are you from? I'm from India. From where? India. India. People from India can't participate in the diversity visa. Okay. Hmm. Because the, there's a lot of people already in the United States from India, so hmm. so people from India aren't eligible for the diversity visa lottery. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Bye, Abby. See you, buddy. All right. All right. Yeah. There's only the, the, the top 20 countries or so of which there's a lot of those people in the United States can't participate in the diversity visa. It's to increase diversity in the countries of people coming. That's where the name comes from. Emily is here. Hello, Emily. You're on mute, Emily. Hi. I like your hoodie. I wish I had my hoodie on. Then we would match <laughs> today. Today wasn't a hoodie day. I, I got dressed up for y'all. Uh, I got cut off the last time. I was asking a question about the oh, TV sorry. lottery. Okay, let's do sorry. it. That's okay. Um, I, I have friends in uh, Fiji. I'm Fijian that got selected and they got an interview and they were granted a visa approved. Great. And just, I think they had to come back after a week to the embassy, to the consulate to pick up their passport and were told that um, they weren't successful because the quota here in America had um, reached 55,000. That's possible. Uh, is there anything that they this can... Was, this was last year, fiscal year? Yes. They yeah. were, they oh, were... It, it's over. It's as if they were never selected. If they don't have their visa in hand or their green card in hand, that is over. And they did, they did, they did hit the cap this year, sort of like in August, I think. So that that sounds right to me. Yeah, I mean, they, they it doesn't had sound that. doesn't sound happy, but that sounds correct. Right. Is there anything that they can do? Just uh, keep we, keep applying. There's nothing they can do, even if they were given a, a visa, a congratulations letter at the consular. They didn't get the visa though, right? Not on the passport. No. Yeah. So that yeah. They got, that that's just bad luck. That's real bad luck. But it's as if they were never selected. Wow. Is there anything that they can do, like uh, file a motion or? Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Bye, Emily. Uh, thank you. Good luck. All right, Fiji. We haven't heard from Fiji in a while, so that's nice. We always like to hear from other countries and other places, so that's always good. Um, somebody's complaining about me not answering questions in the comments. I don't answer questions in the comments. All right. Let's go to Mercy. Hello, Mercy. Mercy, you're on mute. All right. Mercy's out of here. Um, Brandon says hello to everyone, but only those from California. Everybody from the other 49 states, Brandon does not say hello to you. Just for those in California. Um, oh, no, I see. He's in California. Oh, sorry. Man, I'm tired. It's been a long week. All right, all right. Uh, sorry, Brandon. We all say hi to Brandon. Good to see you, bud. All right. Um, Tofael is here. Tofael. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I just turned off my camera. I think it's because of the, you know, it's getting slow. Yeah, yeah. So all good. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I like I need some time uh, from you to explain the situation, what's going on right now. Go so for it. We got time. We got all the time <laughs> in the world. <laughs> all right. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I think I'm from Bangladesh, right? I'm the I think the first one maybe to call you. Okay, so um, uh, so I I got married my with my wife, and then uh, you know she applied for me uh, for my green card like after six months of marriage, and we wait, applied. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you're from Bangladesh, and are you in Bangladesh or are you in the United States? No, no, I I'm in the US right now. Yeah, I, I came. Yeah, I came here as a F1, then I got my H1B. Right, I am right now on H1B, and also. Uh, yeah, I got my GCE ID as well. Okay. So what's happening right now is, okay, yeah. So it's uh, right now almost 28 months, right? But the average time uh, in here in Virginia with the Norfolk Service Center is 20 months and a half, but it got 28 months. So in the meantime, they took my biometrics and also they gave me my EAD. And like five months ago, they asked for medical record examination report, right? I-693 which uh, by a, via email and I send it to them, but 
after 60 days or 90 days, there was no update. Then I called them. I say, hey, what's going on normally? If you ask for a like, you know, uh, medical RFE response, then it's an indication that you waive the interview. So, and they are saying they have so many backlogs. They are trying to reply, blah, blah. And they didn't reply. Then again, after like 60 days, again, I call them back. You know, that's all BS. That's just, this is all just because you're from Bangladesh. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe who knows so then uh yeah and then uh, they said oh then i called them they said no like in your case the interview is not waived so they are waiting to schedule an interview for me so the problem right now having with my wife you know you know like how it goes like whenever we have fight and some issues right and then she just says she she should not go to the interview so and then like the situation is like, i think getting a little worse and even this year she's even not want to like sign the lease with me so, so it's, like, it's the third year yeah like the three three years of our marriage will be completed so the lease renewal will be for the fourth year and she's not in no way she's not gonna sign it so since since she's doing this kind of problem even like from before i knew she might you know create problems so i asked my employer as well to apply for my green card and they did that so i also have ead from my employment based uh, application as well but you know that's going to take long time as you know there is so many backlogs right now going on that might take maybe another 2 to 3 years because they applied for ev3 so in this situation i my question is like what should i do like if my wife doesn't doesn't want to go to the interview and if she want to make is it, it, a bad case so what should i do so that it doesn't impact my other you know uh, like application right for my employment should i withdraw or should i wait to see what uscis does so if they, so if if you got an interview notice tomorrow what would happen right like so that that's my question right if i get an interview notice right, tomorrow I'm asking you a question tomorrow. Some, oh, hey, baby. We just got a letter in the mail. The Our interview is on December 1st in a week and a half. Would she go to the interview with you? Uh, yeah. I, so my wife, if she doesn't want to go to the interview, so that in that case, what should I do? Should I you go? You didn't answer my question. What would happen? <laughs> would she go with you or not? Oh, no, she, uh, she, I mean, she, the indication she's giving right now, she will not go. Are you living in the same place right now? Yes, in the same place right now. Are you sleeping in the same bed? Yes, uh, she's not in here right now. She's in another state. For work? For work, yes. So if USCIS came at five in the morning tomorrow and knocked on the door, they would say, where is Miss? Where is she? And you'd be like, she's, she's over there somewhere else? Yeah, she has all her like uh, all her clothing, even documents, all her here in my apartment. It's just she's physically in another place. For how long has she been gone? She's coming and going back and forth, like for for quite a, some time, like um, maybe I think for around a year. So for a year, five days out of the week, she's in some other state. Uh, is, no, she's like, I mean, then she's also with me for like a few weeks, a few months. And then again, I, I also go there. I also visit there. And then, for example, I stayed three months because I was, I also work from home, right? Remote work. So I was able to go and stay there too. And your employer, at what stage is the green card that the employer is filing? So that one is, so just priority date got current, I think, uh, yeah, this month. So... Sure. Is there a 45 on file already? Like, how far along are you in that? Yeah, 485 is filed. I got EAD also through my uh, 485, like via the employment one. Mm -hmm. So they applied it last uh, October 2022 for 485. Okay. So you yeah. have a, and, and you've main, have you maintained your H1B? Is your H1B still current? Right. Yep. yep. I'm still maintaining. Yep. Okay. So, I mean, to me, I'd be thinking about defense versus offense. So I don't think anything good's going to happen if you or your wife show up at that interview, right? So mm -hmm. so um if the marriage is in trouble, then I think you need to and you you have that great fallback. You have a wonderful fallback that most people in your shoes don't have. Most people in your shoes are sort of screwed when the US citizen says I ain't playing anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So to me you know, I, I always say in every marriage case that the U.S. citizen has a lot of power, right? Right, yeah. Because 
if they withdraw the I-130, then everything is over, but you have this whole other option. So I would, um, I would just hope that the green card gets the, the employment based green card gets adjudicated quickly. Um, I will say that I think they screw around with men from Bangladesh, both on employment and on family, but I think you're much more likely to get the green card faster on the employment route. So if, if something happens, on the marriage case, I would mm -hmm. probably call our office and say, Jim, I need you to help me <coughs> withdraw that I-130 mm -hmm. and, then, and then focus on the focus on the I-140 with your employer. So the I-130 is by by my spouse, right? By my wife. Okay. Yeah, so only so, only she can withdraw it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, can, she's not she's not withdrawing it either. So that's the problem. So do you think in case there is an interview, should I go to the interview or sh I should call them and like, what should I do? That's, that was actually my question. In case there is an interview, notice, okay, I have an interview maybe December or January, January whatever, and but she doesn't want to go with me, then in that case, what should I do? Well, that is a trick bag because you can't withdraw the I-130. I would ask her to, I mean, are you going to move out? Are you getting divorced? Is that where this is headed? Uh, there's no, I mean, sometimes she threatens, but she doesn't, I mean, she, uh, but yeah. you, you have agency here. You're, you're, you're not, you're not subject to her. I mean, to me, I don't trust her anymore. I can't rely on her anymore. She's probably going to screw me if anything goes right. further in the I-130. So I would just start the divorce process as soon as possible. I'd notify USAS that I'm filing for divorce. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to proceed on that I-130. I can't withdraw it myself because I didn't file it, but I want to mm -hmm. withdraw my 45. So should I, do you think like one of the law, but I was not sure about that. One of the lawyers saying you you can withdraw your I, uh, I-485 for the marriage based, but you, sh you should do carefully since you you have another I-140, uh, 485, right? I think we've definitely reached the point where you need a lawyer. I don't think you want to do this willy nilly by yourself. So yes, I do think you need to withdraw the, the marriage based 45. And I do think you need to do it carefully and you need to be real sure that you do it the right way. Okay. Okay. Got you. Okay. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you. Bye, Tofayel. See you, buddy. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's really nice he's got that option. Most people, once that U.S. citizen says they're out, that's sort of the end of it, and the person's going back home. So it's nice that they have that option. Natalia is here. Hello, Natalia. Hello, sir. Do you hear me? Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. Uh, so briefly describing my, thank you so much for taking me. Um, so describing my situation, I am a F1 student studying for, so I finished my uh, master's degree and I'm uh, studying for my DMA. I recently got married this summer with uh, the guy from Louisiana. So we are filing together the documents now. A US I citizen? Can... You married a US citizen? Yes, sir. Okay. Great. So, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, and we are finding the documents and in I-485 form part eight, question 24A, there's a question about if you ever have been uh, a J exchange, non-immigrant visitor, mm -hmm. if you have been a subject of the two year- mm -hmm. home, um, resident, home residency. Home residence, yes. Thank mm -hmm. you, sir. Yes. So I was a J1 in 2017. I came for four months. I worked three months and I traveled like a three months and a half and I traveled for two weeks. And then I came back to Moldova, to Russia. Actually, I was studying in Russia at that time. So um, what should I answer? Was I? Do you have your old passport? No, I already renewed it. Do you have a scanned copy of your old visa? Probably I could find it somewhere in my old emails. Yeah, so you want to look for that or you want to look for what's called the DS-2019. The DS-2019 is like an I-20. That's the document that the government, get, the State Department gives you that's sort of your proof of status for entry. So either the DS-2019 or the uh, visa itself will stay on the stamp. Bearer is subject to Rule 212E or Bearer is not subject to Rule 212E. The, the kind of visa that you had, the kind of J1 that you had, it sounds like you were not subject. So I don't think you need to be terribly worried about it. Um, the other thing is, have you lived outside the United States for two years after you came on that J1? Or have you lived yes. at home? Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. So that might be a whole other route, but it doesn't sound like you're subject to it. So just track it down. 
And then, and then it should say on the DS-2019, it'll say in the bottom left-hand corner or on the visa, it'll say the bottom right-hand corner. Just look there. It probably, if you just came for work and travel, like to a hotel or something or a nanny or something, then you probably weren't subject to it. So you should be fine, but you just need proof of it. Thank you so much. And do you, can I ask one more question? Yeah. And I want to say one other thing. If you can't find your old visa and you can't find your DS-2019, you could reach out to the organization that issued your DS-2019, the agency that you came through. They might have a copy of it. That's that's great. Yeah. Uh, that's really great. Is, is the I-94 form, ha uh, I saw it has my entries and one of the entries for 2007. Yeah, that probably won't have it. Okay. And uh, uh, thank you so much. And another sure. question mm -hmm. uh, is that I came here as an F1 student. I mm -hmm. studied in Louisiana, graduated that, and my visa expired on May 13, but I already was accepted to another university mm -hmm. uh, for my DMA. And your I got my. Your, your visa expires or your I 20 expires? Uh, I don't know. I. Uh, so, so remember, remember for F1s, your visa is your ticket into the United States. You just have to enter the United States before the expiration date. But once you're here, you're admitted what's called D slash S for duration of status. So as long as you always have updated I-20s and you're switching from one school to another, as long as you don't have a gap and make sure that the new school issues you a DS, um, I'm sorry, not, uh, issues you a I-20 that'll carry you over and you can stay well past May. And plus you're married to a U.S. citizen. So a lot of different mm -hmm. reasons why you don't need to worry about it. You just need to make sure that you get an updated I-20 when you switch schools. Yes, they updated my I-20. I'm saying like when it was expired, as I thought, the visa in the passport is expired on May 15. And then I had 60 days grace period. No. And then I got my new I-20 in the end oh. of June. Okay. So it okay. was, I don't know when it was the I-20 expired, but they issued me a new one. So they renewed my civis information i guess so you need to find out from your new school or your old school when they terminated your sevis record and whether you have coverage or not whether okay. there was a gap if they but from it's, coverage from the university whichever one has the information you have to check I mean, the new school might have be able to access it or you might need to go back to the old school and figure out when they terminated your sevis record this will this will all be forgiven because you're married to a u.s citizen if there was a gap it's okay um mm -hmm. but you just got to nail it all down. Yeah, we some, got married. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, because there's some questions on the 45 about have you ever violated the terms of your status? Have you ever overstayed a visa? That kind of stuff. So you, you want to make sure you get that stuff right. Yes, that's that's very important. Uh, and I actually was working as a CPT student in a music school. And whenever my university year finished, they asked me to like give some more lessons like once, twice a week because they didn't have other teacher. So I was keeping coming there. So technically, I think it was not right if my visa. Um, so probably probably was a violation of your F1. So you want to admit all that because again, it'll all be forgiven because you're married to a US citizen. But if you lie, lie about it or misrepresent, then you, they could deny you your green card for that. So don't do that. Okay. So I will tell all the truth. So even uh, if I work. Yeah, like so you need, month, yeah, you need to be real careful with all those questions to make sure you answer them correctly and bring in the right paperwork. Thank you so much. Thank you from all heart. Thank you. Bye, Natalia. See ya. Bye. Thank you. See you. Got it. All right. That was Natalia. Now we got asking for a friend. Hello, asking for Hi, a friend. Hi, Jim. First, How you doing? <laughs> doing well. First, I need to thank you because um, I'm going to ask for a friend, but for me, I've been following you for a year and I just got my green card um, following all your instructions and advices. Nice. And it was 68 days. Uh, I, I sent all the documents, everything. I told the truth. So it works. It really works. Um, now I'm asking for a friend. So I have a friend. She has been here in the States. She has been here in the States with, um, he came in with K3 visa. And um, she was married before. So I understand that why she, she got that visa. But when she got here, the person that petitioned her um, divorced, her. no, sorry, abandoned her. So when came when the time came to um, apply for everything, she didn't get through any paper. So she was abandoned and that's it. That's the last thing that immigration wise she did. Um, that was 2004. Uh, she 2004? 
2004. Okay. Then he met another person, also a, a citizen, and they got a, a child together. Um, they didn't get married, of course, because she was married back home. Um, but now she's with her actual partner, a, a great guy. They have a baby together at seven years old. He has special needs, but now they don't know how to proceed. And they have been asking around and she's kind of scared. She she knows she might get deported. And so she doesn't want to even ask about her information or her file. So my question would be, what way <laughs> she has out that's one to to clear her situation if it's marriage if it's uh her son that's now is 16 becoming a, uh getting 21 years old or something and if you could take a case like that so she's in trouble because when you come on a k1 the only way you get to stay is if you adjust through that marriage so that, that was k3 K three doesn't make sense okay. unless she was married. Were they married? She was, she... Yeah, they were mar were married back home in 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 their home country. Okay, so so then it sounds like that her U.S. citizen spouse filed an I one thirty for her and filed a K three to try to make it go faster. It sounds uh -huh. like she, sounds like she entered quickly on the K three. So that's that's a little wrinkle. That's a little wrinkle that we might be able to play around with. I don't know because I haven't, I, you know, I've been I've been complaining about people filing K three visas for ten wow. years. So this is before if she did that in two thousand four, yeah. that was before I even practiced immigration law. So I'd be happy to talk to her and look everything over. She just needs to email me with her documents and we can okay. talk about it. But it's it's a tough case. I know, yeah, and and I'm really scared and and yeah. and I know she she's is smart. She's smart to be careful. So um, even. Even with the U.S. citizen kid, I don't know. Um, she's probably going to need some kind of waiver or something, but it's 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 a mess. Okay, okay. So we will email you with information. Okay, great. Uh, and in case you can take a case like that, how yeah. much that will be so we can prepare? You're talking. This is going to be this is going to be a multi-year effort. You're talking ten to fifteen thousand dollars over time. It's gonna it's not going to be cheap. Okay, and how long that something like that could take? I don't know. That's the least of our concerns right now. It would take years. Okay, okay. Okay, thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. Congrats on your green card. Thank I'm happy you. for you. Yeah, for thank sure. You. Thanks for the call. See ya. Thank you. All right, all right. Let's go over to uh, Aman. Hi, Aman. Oh, how are you doing, sir? Good, buddy. How you doing? I'm all right. Um, so I've been in a marriage for like five years. Um, got my green card in 2020. Okay. And then um, things didn't work out. And then um, I got arrested for domestic violence. And then um, charges were dropped by district attorney. And um, just then, flat out dropped. No court, no no probation, no nothing. Just flat out dropped. Yeah. Okay. And then after then, um, um, it's been like, uh, then she already signed it for the I-751 petition with me. And then I already changed it to a waiver. Um, and then already divorce has been finalized. Uh, um, but it's, and then I filed. Lost. Sorry, it's breaking up. You're oh, breaking okay. up a little bit. So, so, so you got the two year green card. She filed the 751, but, or you, you filed the 751 after divorce. You're, are you legally divorced? Oh, no, I 751 jointly petition. Okay, then and what then happened? I then I got arrested you, for domestic okay. violence. Okay. And then the, the, um, DA just dropped the charges. Yeah. And then um, um, we go our separate ways. And then uh, I changed my um, I-751 to a waiver. And then how I did you do that? How, how did you do that? Uh, uh, with the help of a law attorney. So you sent them a letter asking them to treat it as a, as a solo? That's right. Did they respond in any way? No, it's still uh, the showing that fingerprints were taken. Um, and just and then, just to be clear, just to be clear, the domestic violence charge was against her. It was like you allegedly did something to your spouse, right? No, it was against me. No, no, I know, but what I mean is, it wasn't involving. It was the two of you, not somebody else, not some other person. No, no, no it was okay. Two of us. Okay. Um, and then ahead. I filed a. Um, um, lawsuit uh, with the help of your firm already. Okay. So it's been just 16 months since the case has been pending. Okay. So, so, so is that the right thing? <laughs> I don't know. 
if I done the right thing with because the time frame is says it's twenty months for normal processing time. Yeah, I mean, most are taking twenty four months. Um, and also, you know, whenever you ask them to convert it from, a lot of times we suggest filing a whole new seven fifty one. That's why I was asking you, why didn't you just file a new seven fifty one? Oh, uh, because I don't want to waste the whole new year. That's the reason. Yeah, but the, it's gonna take me one year back. Okay, so what's the question? So, oh, we lost him on. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on with his reception. All right, let's go to Paul. Hello, Paul. Hi, Drew. How are you? Good. This is Drew from Kenya. Okay, hi. I have a course, few questions I'd like to confirm. Okay. So my partner is considering filing green card for me. Who did? My partner. Your partner filed a green card for you? No, we're discussing filing the green card. Is your partner a U.S. citizen? Yes. Are you legally married? No. I lost your audio. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Uh, still no audio. How's that? Can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry about that. I don't know what if if there weren't. If there weren't some technical issues, then it wouldn't be a show. So go ahead. I'm sorry. So so you're not legally married to this person? Yes, but we're planning to get married. Planning to get married. Okay. So and what country did you say you're in? From Kenya. Kenya. Okay. What's the question? So she's in the U.S. right now. Mm. And it's a U.S. citizen. Yep. Um, But we're concerned that because she immigrated via the marriage-based immigration. Aha. That it could be a concern. Yeah. Right. Is that going to be an issue? So, um, is she a citizen or does she still have her green card? She's a citizen. So, <clears throat> so when did, when did, uh, how did she, the person that she married, how did she marry that person? Like, Truly. that person was in the United States and filed an immigrant visa for her? Yes. And then she comes to the United States, gets a green card, then she gets a 10-year green card, and then she applies for citizenship and gets citizenship. Right? Are you there? What the heck is going on? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, so she came through the consular process from Kenya? Correct. And did she apply for citizenship on the three-year rule or the five-year rule? Um, I think it's three. I have to check. Okay, so in our office, we call this a pivot case. So a pivot case is when somebody gets a green card through marriage, then divorces that person and files for a third person. So my big question is, did you know her during all that process or did you marry, meet her after she was like divorced or starting to get divorced? I've known her for a long time now, 10 years. Yeah, so then they, so then USCIS thinks you cooked up this scheme for her to come to the United States, get a green card, and then sponsor you. And so they could go back and attack her original green card. Now, she's a citizen, so they're less likely to do that. But, I mean, let's, let's walk it through this way. When did she become a citizen? Um, she became a citizen in 2022. And when did she file for divorce? Um, I don't know the start date, but it finalized a few months ago. Well, 15 months ago is also 2022. No, no, if, if, a few months ago, it finalized. A few months ago? Yeah. Okay. So if you're asking me, Jim, do you think this is a hard case? Yes, I think it's a hard case. Jim, do you think it's an approvable case? Yes, I do. Jim, do you think that 
I'm going to have to prove up not only that my marriage was legit, but that her original marriage to the first U.S. citizen was legit and wasn't just to get an immigration benefit. All those things are true. And I think the embassy in Kenya is going to give you a hard time. And in reality, they're going to be giving her a hard time, but they're going to do it through you. Okay. But would you recommend we move forward? Or yeah. give time? Yeah, I, I would move forward if you're in love and you want to be together. I, I would, I would, but man, it's, it's going to be a tough case. You probably need help. Would it be better if we give it some time? Say that again. Would it be better if we give it some time? Yeah, I think so. I think it'd be good to wait, to wait a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jim. All right. Good luck. All right. All right. Um, let's see who's in the waiting room. Sam is in the waiting room. Hello, Sam. Hi, Jim. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks. You too. Thank you. I actually uh, applied for my wife and uh, she's in the UAE. We are both in the UAE, actually. Okay. And uh, we have a PD date of September 23 this year. So what are we looking at? How long is it going to be? You're a U.S. citizen? Yes. So you're probably talking a year at USCIS and then five or six months at the National Benefit Center or National Visa Center. And then probably six to 12 months waiting for an embassy date in UAE. Okay. Actually, I got uh, caught by surprise by the previous caller because I was also married, but that was like a long time ago, like 10 years, you know, I got you, divorced. So you mean you got your green card, you got green card through marriage yourself? Yes. Yeah. But did you have kids? No. Were you married a long time? It, I got divorced like, what, like 12 years ago. So how long were you married start to finish? Uh, about a year and a half. A year and a half. That's, that, that doesn't even seem long enough to be able to get a green card. But I guess back then the cases were faster. Yes. So talk to me about that. So so did you adjust status or did you go through the immigrant visa process? No, I, I was a student and I adjusted status. Okay. So you married a U.S. citizen. And um, how... Had you finished your studies? How long had you been on an F1? I was on an F1 for like seven years. Okay, good. And then you married a U.S. citizen, and she yes. applied She applied for a green card for you. Exactly. And I got you, the conditional. Yeah, and then what happened? And then uh, we got divorced, and then I applied solo for the, you know, 10-year so green one. card yeah. and, and citizenship. Got- and that got approved, and then you waited for the five years for citizenship. Yes, yes. When, when did you become a citizen? 2015. Yeah, so that's eight years ago. So I think you're in a little better shape than our friend who was just on because he's talking about, woohoo, I just got my citizenship. Woohoo, I just got divorced. Woohoo, I'm getting married back in the home country, right? So I think it's a little different. Yes. But okay, always, so- always, always something to think about and always something to be ready about, especially if – Wifey number one sent a mean letter to USCIS. That's what you always have to worry about. Yes, and the other thing, my wife, uh, I applied for her for a visit visa like mm-hmm. seven months ago, and she got rejected. Of know, course she, she did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you might, since you're waiting, you might go ahead and do a FOIA on your old immigration file just to see if there's anything bad in there. It's free. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I can do it through USCIS, right? Yep. G639. Yep, yep. Okay, and the other question, uh, could we shift embassy or we have to do it through UAE? Um, Well, you know, eventually the case is going to be pointing to an embassy. If that's where she's living, that's where you're going. Okay. And there is no way to expedite since she is a Syrian citizen? No. No, right? Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Thanks Thanks, a lot. See you, buddy. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So we got a lot of uh, second second romances today, back to back calls where somebody got their green card based on marriage, became a citizen, and then married someone from the home country, the old country. This does happen. We know that for a fact. So, in any event, my name is Jim Hacking. This is the Immigration Answer Show. We got about ten minutes left. 
I'm going to try to bust through as many calls as I can. Um, I hope you all are having a good day. And I hope if you haven't already that you introduce yourself in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. Tomorrow's show is going to be a little bit early. What time are we start tomorrow? I think one o'clock central, one o'clock central again. So I can take off a little bit early and hang out with the kids. I got a deep fry of turkey on Thanksgiving. So that'll be fun. I, um, I did a 14 pound brief beef brisket on Sunday. I forgot to show it to you guys when I was done with that show. Cause we got that crazy call from Benson. So all that being said, let's say hi to Mercy. Hi, Mercy. Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm good, thanks. What's good, up? Good, good, good. Can you hear me? I hear you just fine. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I have a question, and it's like yesterday, yesterday around 12 o'clock, I was there and I had a call, and the person says uh, she's calling from USCIS, and she wants to ask me one or two questions. So I was like, oh my God, okay. So I was at work and I said, okay, let me just tell them to be like, I'm going somewhere so that I can listen to what he has for me. So he said, um, he's asking me why, is, uh, right now I'm working in New York, but my husband is in Philly. So it's like, I've been going back and forth. Okay, but so hold, on. Was hold on, hold on, is that, is that, uh, is that my husband? Hold on. Is that something that they knew before yesterday? Or is that something they found out yesterday after they came looking for you? I don't really know. I don't really know. Because I just got my uh, ED after I went for my interview. After I went for my interview, that they sent me my uh, working authorization. So after that, I have to look for a job and do. So I guess what I mean is... I don't what really I, know what, what I mean happened. Is, so they... What I mean is, on your paperwork, did you list your address as if the two of you were living together? Yes, I list the address. I okay. list the address. So, you get, yes. so yes. someone calls yesterday, says, I'm USCIS, and we have some questions for you. They want to know where you are. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Did they say yes. they came to your house today and you weren't and there? I said right now, no, they didn't say anything. They didn't say that. They didn't say anything. And said, uh, where are you now? And I said, I'm working. I'm working in New York. So I told them I'm working in New York. And the guy was saying, oh, okay, uh, we saw your husband and we asked him to withdraw the uh, I-130. And I was like, how? And the guy was just talking. It was a whole lot. So I was, that time I was just like, I was crazy because the way he was sounding, I was at work and I was just crazy. I said, okay, okay. And she just hung the phone. He hung the phone. So after that, I called my husband and he said, I wanted to call you right now. And I said, what happened? And he said uh, he was on his way going to work and two guys came after him and they were intimidating him and saying a lot of things and they let him sign a paper. Like they like to sign a paper and said, oh, Okay, okay. And I said, was like, I immediately called my lawyer, and my lawyer said, Oh, look, let's wait till the letter that they said they would send comes because right now we don't know what they are up for. So, so I've been checking my USCIS account and I don't find anything there. So they said the, the case is being reviewed, reviewed. So I don't know. So it sounds like they scared your husband into by saying he's engaged in marriage fraud, they were going to throw him in jail unless he withdrew the I-130, yeah. so he signed, he signed yeah, a piece was, of paper. That was, yeah. that was what he said. He said he was afraid. That, he said the guy said he, want, he, will, he will gun him down. He will gun him down and other things. And Did he you was say scared gun, the way the guy was talking gun to him, him. Gun him down? Is that what you said? That was, yeah, that, yeah, that was what the guy, that was what my husband told him. He said the guy said he will gun him down if you don't tell him the, the truth. They said, what truth? And he said he was panicking. And he said he, he gave me a paper to sign. Sign it here. And the, he said he signed. He said he, he was with back and forth like over, over 30 minutes before Which he field? even. Which, he like, it, I, I, this, I don't want to sign anything. Is this Philly? Is that what you're saying? Philadelphia? Philly, Philadelphia, yes. Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay, so what's your question for me, Mercy? I'm sorry this happened. Yeah, so right now I'm, I'm, I'm I don't know I don't know I don't know. So right now that he has he has signed that form, 
so what's my next what's next so if maybe they send i, I don't know i don't really know right now i don't know i don't know what to say i don't even know so, what's going on so i'm not going to talk about your case specifically okay i'm going to talk about what i would do if you were my if you were my client so if you were my client okay i would bring your husband and you into the office and I would find out your entire history. Why are you okay. living apart? Is this a real marriage? I, I would scare the shit out of him all over again. And I would say, I would, I would, I would, okay. I would write down everything that happened. I would probably file if, if I think, mm -hmm. if I thought that your husband was treated unfairly or that they were overly aggressive. And, and most importantly, if your husband still wants to move ahead with the case, if he went, then I would file a new I-130 and I would hit punch them right in the mouth. I would, I would threaten to sue them for the way that they violated your, his civil rights and your civil rights. I mean, but it all depends as it always does on the U S citizen. If the U if I, if, if Jim, if I think that U S citizen is tough and I, and I feel comfortable going to battle with that U S citizen, then I'll do it. But if he's, if he's going to back down and keep saying, Oh, I got scared and I don't want to do this anymore then then it's as if you never filed then you're in big trouble yeah he said yeah so i asked him even right now i'm, I'm working now I'll, I'll go i'll book i'll go back to philly tomorrow so yeah. right today i was asking him so right now if you want to do it again he said he's ready he's ready he's ready to do it but what they did to him like he, he was just going to work and they just bag him and like yeah no i know intimidating him like telling I mean, people so he people don't scared, he was scared and he's american so don't do so. people don't believe me when i say, I the say way, that the way the guy went. say that again she said uh, the way the way they were talking he was scared like they were intimidating yeah. him shouting yeah. at him like and yeah. he said oh okay okay where's the paper he said i will not sign so you have to sign sign and withdraw that uh, uh case so I was then they called me. The guy called me like 30 minutes. Those people that they went, they called me. I, I'm even surprised that they called. I no, was that's their they playbook. That, that's totally their playbook. And I, said, I mean, was, there, were, there, were, there were people commenting on your post saying, this sounds like a, a, it wasn't really USAS. This is exactly yes, what, yes, this, I, is I, a, I, yes. this is exactly yes. what USAS does. They this, called. Is, this is their playbook. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, here's the thing, me Mercy. They, were, you they want, asked me the type of visa. Yeah. yeah. If you want, if you want me to talk to you and your husband tomorrow, I can. I can talk to the both of you tomorrow. But I, I want the two of you together in yes. the same room. I want yes. the two of you together in the same room because I want to observe how you act with each other, and I want to yell okay. at him and scare the crap out of him. He, he, he just. I know, I know, I know him. I know him. Even the day that we went for the interview, you know, he. he <laughs> I know. So when, when they scared him, I know he he would do it. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just, just. <laughs> he was just. <laughs> Send me an email, Mercy, if you want us to talk tomorrow or, or next week, okay? Yes, yes. So that's, that's your email, right? Yeah, info at. On the screen? Yep, info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com. Okay, let me take that picture. Okay. Because Thanks, some Mercy. people were saying I should talk to you. When I yeah. put it on, on, on lawful, lawful, they said I should talk to you. I should talk to you. Yeah, he's Not the, best for he, this he, case, so I want he, to just. He's the star that. witness. He's the star witness. If he if he's ready to fight, we can fight. If he won't fight, we're screwed. Oh my God! Okay, okay. Thanks, okay. Mercy. Okay, bye. Okay. See okay. ya. So right now, right now that they haven't sent any letter, we should wait, right? No, you need to you need to go fast. You need to go fast and file a new application. I think, and you need. But we it all depends what he's going to say. I want to hear everything that happened, and I don't want to talk about it all on camera. I want to hear everything from him. Okay, 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 okay. Bye, okay, Mercy. Okay. See Thank ya. you. Okay, bye. All right. I think we got time for one more. Let's go to Alisar. Alisar, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. What's up? I have a question about I uh I have a VAWA in process. Okay. And, uh the VAWA is just me. And I was wondering what how can I go about adding a child under 18 to it that is overseas and have them join me? I sent in an, an amendment to the 360, I-360, and it, they sent it back. I sent an amendment to the pending I-485, and they sent that back. I don't know the answer to your question. I don't know the answer, but I can figure it out. If you email me, um, we can check tomorrow, and I, I can do some check. I can have the intern um, check it out, 
I just don't know the answer to that. I, I don't do a ton of 360s myself. I don't know that you can add them, but we can try. I thought we'd be able to amend the petition because she has been named, but has not been requested to join as her dad. Her dad and my ex-husband did not get along. Her dad actually had bad feelings about this guy. And turns out he was right. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just send me an email and I'll, um, we'll, I'll kick it around with the team tomorrow. They'll, they'll be able to tell me one way or the other. I just don't know. Thank you. Thank you so much. You got it. Bye Alice Arcia. All right. All right. That'll do it for today's show. Um, need a lawyer and everybody else in the waiting room, go ahead and um, come back tomorrow. We'll be back at one o'clock. Need a lawyer. I'll try to get on you first in the morning, or you can always email us info at, uh, thanks everybody. If you're not on our uh, text line, you should be 314-470-3300. Uh, text word show. Now listen, <laughs> you don't need me to tell you guys anything, right? You heard it straight from the horse's mouth. If you're on Reddit, she posted on Reddit. If you saw an immigrant home, she posted on immigrant home. So this is what happened to that lady. Do I know whether the marriage is legit? No, I don't know. Sounds like they're living apart. That's always tough. But that, that list of occurrences, the way that everything happened, that's how they do it. That's exactly how they do it. So when everyone was like, oh, that doesn't really sound like USAS. That sounds like your husband got somebody to call you up and scare you. I didn't buy that at all. This is, this is exactly what they do. So, and Jay says the only reason they would scare a partner who filed for Weiss is if the marriage was fake. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. It might be true, but I don't think it's hundred percent necessarily true. I will stand up for the immigrants until proven otherwise, right? I will not believe what USCIS. I was just talking to some of our intake team the other day. And I said to them, listen, USCS, like people call our office all the time. Jim, I got this RFE. Jim, I got this notice of intent to deny. Jim, I got this denial. USCS doesn't believe me. Do you think I take their word for it? Do you think I listen to USCIS? I make my own determination. I do my own research. I figure out, do I trust this person? And do I uh, want to go to war with them? Or do I not? That's, that's the question I ask. I don't give a flying fuck what USCIS says as a first go round. So I'll refile a case. I'll appeal a case. I will respond forcefully to a notice of intent to deny. I'm not listening. If I listen to those chumps, we would, we wouldn't have half our cases. We wouldn't have two thirds of our cases. If we listen to those chumps, this is why we fight for immigrants. And this is why we put together strong cases. And I guess I guess I need to do a training on here's what you do if USCIS comes to scare the shit out of you. This is what you do. And what you do is you say, and just so everybody knows, I, I'm not going to bury this in some long training. Here's the deal. I will be happy to talk to you, motherfucker, but I want my lawyer there with you. Now, you might not want to say motherfucker. They might not like that so much. So just say, I'll be happy to talk to you, but I want my lawyer there with me. And if they say, bullshit, 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 I'll be happy to talk to you. I want my lawyer there. Now, that can be hard if you're standing there in your tidy whities when they knocked on the door or when they jump out of the bushes when you're making your way to the car. I know that's scary. And I know it's easier for me because I'm a lawyer and I'm a white guy and I was born in America. I get all that. If you don't stand up for yourself, no one else will have the chance to fight for you, right? He tanked that case because they scared the crap out of him, right? And I get it. I'm not blaming him. I'm not mad at him. I'm not saying that I might not have done the same thing if I was living in a foreign country and two big guys and one of those guys said they were going to gun me down. Yeah, AJ says, just say, I invoke my fifth. I, I, I might not do that. I don't know if you want to just flat out invoke the fifth, the, the fifth amendment. Um, yeah. As Tony says, Tony's got, Tony's got the hookup. Don't sign shit. All right. I'm going to make a sign. It says, keep calm. Don't sign shit and say, I'm happy to talk to you, but I want my lawyer there. That's the rule. Those are the rules. Be nice and polite. Don't sign shit and tell them that if you want to talk to me, I'll do that, but we'll do it at USCIS or my lawyer's office. 
and I'm not saying anything else because remember you're, you're asking them for a favor, right? You're asking them, they, they, they have the keys to the kingdom. They decide whether or not your wife gets that green card or not. So you can't be a total jerk. But at the same time, if you give up the store, I mean, and the thing is some now, not, not necessarily today in this call, but sometimes, you know, I've made videos before about strange shit that I've seen. Sometimes when people don't bring a lawyer to their interview, they'll get an actual sworn statement from the U S citizen. So it's not just, I withdraw the I one thirty. It's like this shit was made up and she paid me $3,300 or, you know, stuff like that. So you've got to give your attorneys and the people you care about the chance to fight themselves. All right. So there you go. There you go. That's all I got for today. I hope you all, I think this was a good little, uh, a good little primer and we'll probably do some more training on this. Maybe we'll just practice with people. I'll just, I'll just try to scare people and say, we're going to gun you down if you don't sign this shit. Uh, all right. That'll do it, everybody. Uh, if I don't see you tomorrow, I hope I do, but tomorrow we'll be doing the show at one o'clock, one o'clock central. Have a good night.